for a seed to thrive and you know to get to this wonderful corn the other facts must also be right for example enough water no pets or the nutrients of the soil have also to be managed and must give everything to the soil so that at the end of the day we have a wonderful piece of corn well this makes me wonder is this hope of people justified in these projects does high diversity in the field really make such a big difference fortunately i don't have to answer this question myself and now welcome my colleague and program officer for environment and plant health fabian kohler fabian fabian what a wonderful surprise to have you here today too as i mentioned i wonder how high is the value of diversity for a small-scale farmer when he and she gets seeds. Thank you, Clara. Thank you also for this first question. I'll be happy to answer them and uh, share some thoughts. The production, diversified production, as we've just seen it in the soil film, is the basic, is the fundament for diversity and mixed cultures. Apart from that, when one produces in a diverse way, one has diverse sources of income. Uh, market prices can be influenced. Also, exchanges of cultures allow to compensate income. We have also noticed that producers who apply a diversified culture can also offer a more resistant, a more resilient uh, produce. Uh, if we don't have enough water, then we can change to something else. If uh, pesticides, vermine has to be uh, fought against, one can change or through diversified uh, cultures, one can adapt to all those situations and improve the income. Of course, if a rich diversity is uh, practiced, then there will be interactions between all the cultures followed. And this too guarantees a more safe and sound and healthy um, ecosystem. As you said, as far as resources, raw materials um, concerned, uh, we have to take care of factors such as water, such as soil, such as volumes of rain and plants or plants culture can be optimized according to the season. Some, some plants are very difficult and, and have their own uh, characteristics, are capable of fighting against vermin by themselves, can also, um, like uh, legumes, can also uh, fight against air pollution. All this seems very, very interesting, and I think it really corresponds to what BioVision has uh, decided to follow as a key idea. Would you please give us some more details so that we all uh, understand those uh, factors a bit better? Let me uh, jump on this train. Maybe some of you are here for the first time or have been following us for a longer period. You, Most of you know this graph. That you've seen it before. Biovision likes to come back to what we call the push pole way of producing. It is a very interesting and, and uh, effective uh, organic ecological way to proceed and to cultivate on the one hand, but it's also an excellent example to show what what kind of potential this uh, way of producing uh, holds uh, and really correspond in an optimal way to what we try uh, to achieve. Briefly, to show you what it means, push pull. Uh, allows us to cultivate three sorts, three species of uh, plants. Um, we plant between mice, for instance, which can also then have an effect on vermin. Vermin is attracted by the brachial grass, which you see placed uh, left and right of the mice plants. That is where vermin uh, also leaves their eggs, and these eggs will not develop. The modium also uh, allows the soil to be enriched. It, it um, is a nutritious substance for the soil. That's why also the, the crops we uh, have at the end of the season are far abundant. 
it uh, also has a direct uh, impact on what we call the sorcerer's seed. Sorcerer's weed uh, is also killed uh, along the process and the sorcerer's weed can kill uh, crops, whereas with this way of proceeding, those plants are attacked at a very young stage, so don't grow, will not develop into something dangerous. Another example for this uh, systemic ways to proceed is to not consider plants individually, but as a group of individuals who have to survive and live and fight together. Here, a very simple image of uh, cocoa production. On the right-hand side, you see what monoculture brings with uh, crops between, we can't read these, yes, here, um, the cow cocoa plant also allowed to throw off um, more crops. Uh, bananas also have developed thanks to the mixing with the cocoa cultures. And here you see in front of you uh, the, the crops. Now, we've um, diverse, diversified slightly this way of cultivating here on the exam. You see four plants uh, which interact with, of course, own characteristics. Let's see how crops develop when one proceeds this way with four species. This is a bio or an organic agroforesting system. We don't have uh, cocoa only. And on this system, you see that the produce, the crops are a bit slow, a bit lower. But if we add all the other crops, then we come to far higher results. And this is what you see. Uh, the, the crops are far more important. No chemical or synthetic um, ingredients have been used. Uh, the total, the total uh, results are comparable. Uh, also, because the incomes, when cumulated, are identical. What we also see is that the number of species, be it insects or birds or soil productions is far more diversified. As this project, which we've just presented, is part of an international program of uh, the FIBL, which is a Swiss-based uh, laboratorium center. And here on those various, in these various countries, you see how this project has been developing in Bolivia, in Kenya, and in India. It also allows us to compare the ways which we cultivate, the ways which we produce, and see which brings more or better. The entire project, if you're interested in, because I don't have enough time to give you all the details, uh, can of course contact us afterwards and I'll be very happy to give you more details and even uh, something in writing. Uh, I'd be very happy to, to develop this uh, the, this uh, part of the information. I myself will, will develop and deepen my knowledge concerning Kenya, also by collaborating with the ICP Institute, which is this insect research laboratory. Here, as a summary, how or what does this comparison look like between the three uh, countries we just mentioned? We use conventional and traditional uh, cultures first compared to organic or biological ways of procedure. The intensity of the culture can also vary. We have a high, a cash crop oriented way of producing, uh, which also implies far more invested capital, whereas the low input for small-scale farmers demands more work, definitely, but uh, also implies that one works on smaller fields and allows people to work locally, to produce locally, to cultivate locally. This uh, Syscom project, uh, which we really, which really delved in, doesn't, as I said, doesn't only concern Kenya and Bolivia, but it allows us to compare those projects, meaning that we do not only lead uh, or carry out experiments. What we also do is to uh, have laboratories or experiments shared between uh, farmers and then compare those two elements who can either 
optimize and complement each other or could exclude each other. The uh, small scale partners, of course, benefit from the uh, results of those larger project leaders and experts. At the same time, all the infos received, all the knowledge reserved can be uh, experimented by small scale farmers in front of their own doors. The, um, and the results obtained can also then be passed on or transferred to the larger systems. And this is something where we will come back to in a moment. Fundamentally speaking, Swisscom has been examining rotors of three years, rotations of three years, with amongst other things mice, as you see here, also potatoes and legumes. So, results. I won't want to bore you with all those figures and statistics. Uh, even though also as those figures cannot be explained in full detail today. So let's come to the main info you might want to take back home from this. Very often when we examine, analyze organic or ecological production cement, we also have to compare the costs and uh, the proceeds, uh, uh, costs and results for society and for the soils. Of course, we can't stress the fact that the number of species has developed, has become far more varied, which is something very positive, of course, uh, or that the soil health, soil fertility has improved still. Once we have uh, come up with such results, the Swisscom project shows us, or has also showed us, that those systems in tropical countries can also bring to compatible results as the traditional system. Of course, techniques used are an important factor and the kind of species we plant also play a role. But in the results by Swisscom, we have also noticed that soil fertility, soil health has, has been optimized. Again, that diversity in plants, insects, animals altogether have been enriched over the time that there is a market for such produce and products and that the farmers too earn better than they have done before. Another important factor or another result that appeared in those results is that specifically in vegetable produce, a, um, the, the presence of vermin and also uh, pests have been, um, has been uh, dropping and thus allowing incomes to grow up here. Some more figures for you to take a look at going back to 2011, 2011, 2014, 2017, 2020, the results, the crops coming from uh, bean, bean produce, again applied in this three-year rotation system, Kenya. And uh, again, examining the results three years later. As you can see, the differences are quite remarkable quite noticeable with the traditional systems and the organic way of proceeding in blue. 214, a series of, of uh, environment conditions had a strong impact on the produce. 217, those diversifications were also very, very important. And 2020, as you see, the produce has been increasing immensely thanks to an organic way of proceeding. Why, you might ask us, why did the beans throw off far more in 2020 than with traditional uh, planting system. Of course, we need support from uh, science, science. We need support from uh, different techniques. And I'm very happy uh, to um, welcome now Nancy Mwende and Felix Mathera from Nairobi, who is a play in Nairobi. Liebe Gäste, ich werde die nächsten Minuten eher in Englisch weitersprechen. Wenn Sie eine Übersetzung brauchen, bitte ich Sie, die Kopfhörer aufzusetzen. Ansonsten äh, geht es auch ohne Kopfhörer weiter. Uh, Nancy und Felix, wonderful that you're here. You're on stage at the Biovision Symposium. I'm glad you made it. So, so good to have you here. You've been working with 
for more than five, almost five years actually at ECPay in this Syscom project, mm -hmm. whereas uh, Nancy is mostly doing lab experiments and screen, uh, screenhouse experiments, evaluating best practices in organic pest management. And Felix, um, you're then uh, testing the inf innovations and results that are coming from, from the Syscom project and bringing them to a real open field setting where you experiment together with farmers um, on the results. Yes, sure. Thank you. Great to have you here. So can the two of you somehow explain me a little bit what is behind this change that we experienced in 2020 in the organic system? Were there any changes in how you, how you did the experiment? What are the reasons for that? Oh, as uh, you had alluded earlier on, the child, there is a considerable uh, yield losses in the organic vegetable production system due to price pressure. Our team took initiative to look at this problem in a holistic manner where we had to take uh, integrated uh, pest approaches to manage the pest. And uh, some of these uh, innovations which we came uh, out with were to improve the soil nutrients for the crop. As we all know that an healthy plant has an advantage to counter the attack of a pest. So we went further to review the commercial pesticides and also homemade plant extracts which were being used at our long-term experimental systems. And uh, we also considered the uh, use of companion cropping and uh, also sticky traps to manage the pest. Thus, we can uh, be in a position to say that uh, all these interventions could have contributed to the high yields experience in French bean seasons in 2020. Okay, wow, that's super interesting, Nancy. So actually what I said before in the beginning of my presentation when talking about di diversity, integrating diversity, it seems like you have some of these approaches already integrated in Syscom as well. Um, but of course, you don't take them and just start in a long-term experiment and make big changes in how you, you're working on these experiments. So what are the steps that you're actually taking before you take these new approaches to the field? Oh, of course, the first step is to have focus groups with, uh, with farmers to evaluate what they are using and if it's effective. In our case, we held uh, focus groups to discuss about the plant extracts which they were using and uh, we evaluated their efficacy, and uh, we also went back to our LT systems to check on uh, the commercial pesticides which we were using, and uh, we brought all this to the lab to carry out some experiments. Uh, lab conditions are usually controlled, so we expect uh, in lab the results which uh, we expect they are at optimal. So uh, I can uh, take you through some of the results we got after making some adjustments to these products. For example, uh, in, uh, in the first uh, bar shows fermented homemade uh, plant extracts. That's the treatment which farmers were using. And uh, in, the, in our case, we tested this product and, uh, in, uh, to control aphids in cabbages. And as you can see, the mortality le levels were below 10%. So we made some improvements. That is, uh, in, uh, in form of, instead of uh, fermenting the plants for 14 days, we soaked the, the plants for one day and also add, did some adjustments with the concentrations. And as you can see, uh, after doing these uh, adjustments, the plant extracts were effective in the management of aphids. From the graph, we can see that uh, after the improvement, that we were able to achieve almost 70% mortality, which was comparable to commercial uh, pesticides. Why are we rooting for these homemade uh, plant extracts? One, they are locally available and easy to make. So that makes it easy for farmers to be able to use them uh, uh, easily to manage the crop, the, the pest in, the, in their farms. 
what a wonderful example of how actually this SISCOM project learns from what's already existing at the formal level and builds up and improves the knowledge that is already around. We have a project where we, ha we call it a participatory on-farm uh, project. And uh, in this uh, project, we normally have, we interact with farmers and uh, we are able to test these innovations with the farmers and see where their challenges and uh, also improve on uh, on the, on the innovations, and uh, after we get uh, the improved in innovations, we are able to feed them uh, to long-term uh, trials. This sounds impressive, Nancy. So this now represents the results you have from your lab experiment, yeah, where we made small adjustments to these plant-based extracts and managed to improve them. So what is the next step when you test it, after you test it in a lab? What happens next? In lab conditions, as I've already alluded to, these, these are controlled environments. So if a product proves to be effective under lab conditions, we have to take it to semi-field conditions, which happens to be screen house. And uh, after we find out that uh, they're effective, we take them to the open field uh, settings. In our case, we found out that our plant extract, that is uh, the improved plant extracts who are effective in semi-open uh, uh, semi, semi semi field conditions, that is at the screen house, so we had to take them to open farm field. And uh, as you can see from uh, the graph here, where we have a soil crop, where no interventions was done, the abundance of aphids, which happened to be the pest for the cabbage, was high. But uh, where we have uh, the crop and the intervention has been done, that is application of this uh, improved plant extract, the populations came down, meaning the, the plant extracts were effective in the management of uh, cabbage in the systems. And we talk here about the abundance of the aphids, loise. Um, what about, uh, well, on one hand, you, do, you measure the damage and the abundance of the, uh, of, of the insect, but what happens to the yields after that? Uh, it's important to know that uh, when uh, the, 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 the pest pressure is high, definitely it will affect the yield. But if we manage to control the pest pressure, that is in the case aphids, the yields are expected to go, to go up. So for example, in our results here, we can see where we have soil crop, where no interventions were done, the yields were lower. But uh, where we have the, uh, the cabbage crop and interventions were done to manage the cabbage cabbage aphid, the yields went high. But we did not stop there. That's yeah, yeah, because I could also, from what I said in the beginning, or where I reflected a bit, I could also imagine that bringing in some more diversity into this system could make it even more productive and pest control more effective. Yeah, and that's where my friend Felix comes in. He has some more interesting results to share with us. Yeah, yeah uh, Fabian, the, the story, the road didn't end there. We looked forward to addressing the challenge of uh, organic uh, vegetable production with the basis of the farmer information we got the farmer my, from the farmers. My colleague already mentioned about the plant extracts. But we also realized the farmers had more information that uh, they were using companion cropping, that is intercropping with a crop that had uh, benefits to the plant, mainly on uh, insect pest management. And uh, we found out that the farmer, through focus group discussions, that they were testing, I mean, they were working with the Targetes Minuta or uh, Mexican Marigold, if you want. And uh, they were also working with the Capsicum or Chili. They were also working with Spring Onion to see if they could reduce the populations uh, of the pests in their fields. They're also doing coriander, but that was not much adopted. We ran some side experiments of course, to, to have the basics, and we realized that uh, some of them were really working, indeed, like uh, Targetes minuta, but guess what? It was ending at the field. We couldn't, nobody consumes Targetes minuta in the diets. So coriander was a better alternative. It was having similar results, and you could still feed on uh, coriander in your diet. And therefore, we adopted it as a companion plant for our trials, and we set out to experiment, the, I mean, to continue the experiments with the farmers. So we, of course, collected the uh, data of uh, the pest populations in the fields, and I will speak about aphids. It's a very critical pest of uh, cabbage. As you see, 
on the data displayed there, soil cropping, which is no intervention, the pest populations, I mean the aphid populations were high. And what my colleague just showed later, I mean earlier, the soil crop plus botanicals, the second bar was really working well. But uh, of interest to us is the intercropping, where we just intercropped with the uh, coriander and no other spring. And you can see we had interesting yields. Uh, they were really comparable with the use of plant extracts. But much further, Integrating the two approaches, that is the uh, use of botanicals and also use of intercrop, I mean the companion plant, reduced the populations of the aphids even much further, as you can see on the last bar. Thank so, you. But Felix, speaking maybe for myself and maybe for some people here in the audience, I, maybe the strong smell of coriander, my, at least for me, it would, it would keep me away from quite some meals. Yeah. <laughs> Is there, are there similar effects that you could observe for the case of aphids? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, initially, we, 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 thought, we actually thought uh, aphids would be thrown away from the, from the plots just by intercropping with, with coriander because of the smell. I see you also related to the aphids. But uh, we realized that uh, on top of wading away the insect pests you, you see, through the smell, Coriander also attracted natural enemies and therefore was more diverse and the, the, we, the plots would utilize the natural enemies to wade away the insects, to feed on the insects. For example, you can see the beautiful hoover fly and the ladybird. Uh, in the plots where we used, we intercropped with coriander, coriander alone as an intercrop. We realized the higher populations of, uh, of uh, hoover fly, for example, and therefore integrating Intercropping into pest management strategies is a good thing for, for a farmer for better production. Well, wonderful, Felix, to see how uh, on various levels this is actually working and how nature-based solutions without use of any additional uh, chemical inputs actually bring, bring us such beautiful results. Yep. But what, now we've talked about the abundance again of aphids yeah. and about uh, uh, the beneficial insects. What's in consequence than the effect you can see in the yields? Oh yeah, we got some interesting uh, results in the yields. How about we look at it together? Uh, um, in the plots where we planted, uh, we, we sprayed with botanicals compared to soil cropping. Indeed, we, we realized higher yields. Of course, my colleague mentioned earlier, because a plant that is less infested is guaranteed to give uh, much higher yield than, than that uh, that is much infested. And therefore, we, we now look at uh, intercropping with coriander alone. Uh, our, our, yields, our yields, as you can see, match the ones of uh, spring with plant extracts, the homemade plant extracts that my, that my colleague just mentioned earlier. Uh, by the way, and integrating the two approaches once again, that is use of intercropping and also use uh, of plant extract sprays increased the yields by significant levels for, for, for the, I mean, for the treatments that we use the uh, integrated approaches. Of interest, again, I mentioned earlier that uh, it could be good if we get much of whatever is happening in the field to, to get into the dinner, di dinner dishes. We realize m yield of coriander, so it's more yield for the plots that we are intercropping with coriander. So we find that uh, very diverse and good for, for the families. It's such a beautiful example. Of course, I don't hear it the first, for the first time, yeah. but every time Felix talks about it, I'm fascinated by, by the potential that lies in, this appro in these approaches. So you don't even have uh, use approaches that are that are based on uh, on solutions that really come from nature, yeah. from uh, yeah, without having uh, and really on local resources. But then the beautiful additional effect of, besides having an ecological solution, even have an additional benefit from the harvest of coriander. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So, thinking taking you back one step to the question I asked you in the beginning um, on the on the effect you observed in the long term system. Uh, the comparison trials. What are your learnings now from these cabbage side experiments? Yeah, Fabian, uh, a lesson or a learning is as good as adopted. So therefore, we, from these lessons that we have learned from these experiments, of course, first of all, we went back to the farmers and told them our experiences. And we also recommended the adoption of the long-term experiments in our, in our CISCOM trials in Kenya. And uh, we feel that uh, 
This, together with other interventions, the holistic or system systemic approaches that were, were implemented in the year 2020, could be the contributing factor to the very, very positive yields that we are realizing in the year 2020 compared to the other years. Okay. Yes. So, of course, we can't yet talk of a clear, uh, a clear connection to these results, to all the individual measures you have you have in place, but we're really looking forward to see more of these results in the future years. Um, 2021, you said, is when you expect to test this on cabbage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because this, this, uh, in 2020, when we recommended the technologies is when we had uh, French bean, and we look forward to even much more exciting results in the cabbage season. Great, fantastic. I'm thank really you. looking forward to that, and I hope the audience as well. Thank, thank you, you so much, yeah. Felix. Thank you so much, Nancy. I mean, this is fantastic research that you that you showed here, and it's, uh, it's yeah, it really gives me a good feeling, and I uh, think that there are good, good solutions on the way. Thank you very much. Well, I would like to bring to attention of the audience that uh, we could not have made it uh, alone uh, without the help of our able partners, Fibil, Isipe, Carol, Cohen, and uh, our able donors to leverage on our sustainable uh, organic vegetable systems. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nancy, for a nice social thing. <laughs> Stay another minute. <laughs> we're not yet done we're not yet done thank you very much for the acknowledgement to, to Biovision to the audience here um, to the other donors who also support this SISCOM project but actually Nancy and Felix you are part of a big group of international researchers and um, here it might be worth to quickly mention that this team your team just two days ago was awarded with an important international research prize. So please take a look. I'm changing back to German now. Liebe Gäste, schauen Sie mal ein bisschen nach rechts. Schauen Sie nach have a links. look to the right, have a look to the left in the audience. Take a look upstairs to the ranks upstairs and you might recognize a few faces in spite of the masks we have to work. On this picture, some of the people are sitting amongst us right now. This is the team uh, which landed in, which in Barcelona two days ago uh, received the new prize, the shift prize for uh, agro research, transformational agro finance. And of course, we have received a few impressions and why this prize was so well deserved. Yeah, all the exchange with local farmers, teaching, uh, learning together the way to exam and to analyze results and yields uh, to transform and adapt the way to analyze, to work in a laboratory. Uh, also the systemic way of uh, considering and of analyzing things and very uh, pertinent results have also led to this prize. Therefore, I would really ask uh, the audience to give a very warm applause to the entire team who came up with such fantastic results. <laughs>